Hello and welcome. Luke Malevich here, ChicagoJazzTrombone.com. Today I'd like to talk to you about airspeed and the mechanics of airspeed. What happens physically when we speed up and slow down the air? Now I titled this video Upper Register because that's what we're going to be discussing, but that's going to be also the, the only time I'll try to make that the only time where I use that word because as we, as we work on accessing the different registers, we always want to make sure that we're thinking in terms of, of the airspeed and not so horizontal and not vertical because the air doesn't move in that direction, right? The air is not vertical. We're moving air in a forward motion and we're just speeding it up and slowing it down. And that's how I always like to think about it. So if I start to use words like up or down, it then creates this image in, in, in my mind. And I'm sure it does for you as well of how things are when reality notes don't exist in, in, in that space, everything happens here with airspeed. And there's tons, yeah, there's tons of different videos about exercises to do to access that register or to work on that register specifically, but there's not as much that I've, at least that I've seen. And you can feel free to comment below if you, if you've, you know, there are specific videos demonstrating this or talking about this, but, what I want to talk about is the mechanics of, of how that happens and how air speeds up and slows down. And the, for what for me is the easiest way to do so. And I like to practice things, uh, concepts, whether it's a new concept or things that I've been working on for a long time, I like to practice things away from the instrument just to be able to understand the mechanics of how everything's supposed to happen. Because as soon as, you know, as soon as you pick up the horn, then it becomes trickier to focus on one concept and you're, you know, you're holding the instrument, you're thinking about tension or releasing tension. You're thinking about everything that happens with the mouthpiece being pressed against your lips. So if you can kind of put the horn down and start working on whatever concept it is, whether, you know, whether I'm working on single tonguing, I'll do it away from the instrument just to get the mechanics of it, make sure that everything's working. If I'm working on double tonguing, or doodle tonguing, or ghosting notes. It's always done away from the instrument. You know, there's only so many hours a day that we can practice before we get tired. So that's a great way to do things. I'll do the same thing with improvising as well. I'll improvise lines just this way where you know I know where all the positions are. I know what notes I want to play. Now I'll go through through a uh, solo and, and kind of in this manner. And then when I pick up the horn, if it's the next day or maybe maybe later on during the day, it makes it a lot easier for me to then, you know, kind of play through whatever, whatever the tune was that I was working on, whatever set of changes I was working on. But today let's talk specifically about airspeed and how to, how I access kind of that, that register. What I used to do when I was younger and it's, obviously this isn't the best way to do it, but, I would only use my embouchure and my lips to speed up the air. So what I would do is, you know, you start with a with a nice open open aperture, like you're saying, ooh. I would kind of bring my both my lips in to create a much smaller opening, which would then speed up the air. And it sounds like this. As you can hear the air speeding up, you can you have an idea of what the note's going to be if I were to pick up the horn. What you don't hear and what I can feel is that that creates a ton of back pressure because what essentially I'm doing is, you know, I have a nice, nice open cavity inside and all of a sudden the air is being forced into this tiny opening, which creates a ton of back pressure. I can feel it in my corners. I can feel it actually in my jaw. I can feel it in, in my neck and in my lungs everywhere. I can, I can feel the air kind of backing up, which it'll allow me to play, play certain notes, but it won't me. It won't allow me to do it for very long. So my endurance is going to be be much smaller. What you want to do is find a way to speed up the air before it gets to that opening. And in order to do that, you can kind of employ a similar technique as you would if you were whistling. For those of you that know how to whistle, this is going to be a little bit easier to understand. When you what, so what happens when you whistle, and if you start going there, you do that by lifting up your tongue. So for me, I'm keeping the front of my tongue. For those of you that don't don't know how to whistle or can't whistle, I'm keeping the front of my tongue kind of touching the upper part of my bottom teeth 
and the sides of my tongue are actually slightly in contact with the uh, the upper my upper teeth on the side here the bottom of my upper teeth and that creates kind of this this raised arch in my tongue and what that does is funnels the air through that opening really 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 quickly and I'll kind of demonstrate what what, what happens so I'll start again with a nice open aperture and I'll I'll speed up the air while also moving my tongue so you can hear hopefully you can hear it it almost sounds like more of a hiss but that's because the air is moving much much faster than it was before now I'll demonstrate too I'll do one with just the embouchure and with my tongue being uh, low and out of the way and I'll do one with my tongue being raised and you'll be hopefully you'll be able to hear how the air speeds up and the, the different um, the different sound of the airspeed what's also happening that second time is there's a lot more air coming out because the air is moving so much faster it's being funneled in a lot of the resistance is gone so the you know the air just empties out much quicker and I'm also using much much less muscle when I'm doing it so again, my tongue's at the, touching the bottom, the, the upper part of my bottom teeth, and a little bit of the bottom part of my upper teeth here on the side. And you can, I don't know if you can see it, but not really doing anything as far as muscle is concerned. My, my embouchure's set, but that's about it. And just to kind of demonstrate, I don't really know what note's going to come out when I pick up the horn. Have a, you know, have a general idea of what, what range I'm going to be in. But I don't know the exact note. But I'm also not going to be doing a lot. I'm just going to start the air. And I'm going to bring the mouthpiece up, bring the horn up, and kind of see what happens. And it was really easy. There's not I wasn't really doing much other than just keeping the you know keeping the air moving really, really quickly. And that's really it for me. When the tongue is being used correctly, the air is moving quickly enough that it eliminates a lot of the the pressure and the back pressure that you know that you might otherwise have, and it lets you play in that register for a lot longer. Now, another exercise that I like to do, and I'll demonstrate really quickly to kind of connect the the two air streams, the low and uh, sorry the the slow and the fast air, is to go in between them really quickly. So I'll demonstrate it again without the instrument. And when I'm doing this, I'm not really treating it as a lip slur because I'm not trying to not trying to hit all the notes in between. I'm really just aiming for the difference, for, for slow moving air and then fast moving air. To kind of create that instant connection between the two. So again, it's not meant to be an exercise that that has the notes in the middle sounding good, because they won't. It's an exercise just to kind of understand the mechanics of what it takes to get from slow moving air to fast moving air with the horn on your face. And I do that a lot when I'm warming up, and obviously with lipsers and other things that I do as well. But that kind of exercise helps me to make sure that I'm able to move the air slowly and then quickly at will with the proper technique and not, you know, not allowing any, any unnecessary tension to creep into to what I'm doing. And hope, uh, so hopefully this has been helpful to you. And again, if you can understand the concept without the instrument, once you pick up the horn, it's going to be much, much easier to do because practicing it solely on the instrument without kind of getting the mechanics of it together here it can work but i would imagine it would take a lot longer to kind of to, to figure it out that way so i encourage you to to practice as much as you can away from the instrument to understand the concept of whatever it is you're doing and then when you apply the instrument things are going to be much easier so thank you for joining me and hope to see you next time